Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and you're watching the Crash Course to my NCLOS series, Section 2, Introduction. In this video I want to talk about uh, what is simulated cloth, the difference in between classic cloth and NCLOTH, uh, really what is NCLOTH, and uh, a few things about the mesh that you're going to be uh, working with. Um, I'm going to start off with what is simulated cloth. Well, uh, cloth simulators attempt to simulate clothing and fabrics over a surface, uh, whether it is an animated character or a static mesh like a table. Uh, the simulators attempt to integrate physics into uh, the calculations to simulate gravity, drag, friction, wind, and other worldly effects. Uh, so the animator doesn't really have to do everything by hand. Um, the Maya cloth toolset has evolved in every version since the release of Spider-Man 2. In Spider-Man 2, Maya Cloth had to uh, recreate as realistically as possible Doc Ock's extremely complex costume, which consisted of six layers of cloth that had to interact with each other and the metallic tentacles extruding from his back. And ever since then, changes have been, changes have been implemented uh, to make things as more realistic and easier as possible. But from time to time, studios will prefer to use a third-party plugin such as Cyflex, but I will not be covering that. Uh, in Maya version 8.5, NCLOTH uh, and the Maya Nucleus, which is the centerpiece of N-Dynamics, uh, were added uh, to replace classic cloth. N-Cloth is said to give artists more control uh, over material simulations. So uh, there are a few key difference differences between the Maya classic cloth and uh, Maya N-Cloth. Classic cloth had the users use uh, curves to uh, outline the sections and Maya would automatically generate geometry based on the curves. The pro to classic cloth creation is uh, the user can create sections as if a real seamstress was creating the real cloth. With the seams where the real cloth would be, the simulations would potentially be more realistic. Creating panels uh, can be easy for garment mesh creation. However, the uh, cons of classic cloth is it is very picky about CD placement. Uh, the curve direction and the similarities on the uh, sections are sewn together. Uh, the curves have to be in a closed loop. In addition, the CVs have to line up on a single plane, making the user solely rely on Maya to create the cloth. End cloth, on the other hand, can be modeled from any mesh by the modeler, assuming the geometry is clean and even. If so desired, uh, end cloth can be done in sections like a seamstress, just like classic cloth. It's just no struggling with the curves are really required. So uh, really, what is N-Cloth? N-Cloth consists of uh, particles, links, and cross-links, which I'll show you shortly. Um, this may look like a standard square or polygon, but the dots, which are where the vertices are, are where the particles are, and the edges would be where the uh, links are. And in between the links, are, which are the dotted blue lines, are the cross-links, which hold everything together. Uh, N-Cloth was created with uh, polygon primitives in mind. That means NURBS and subdivisions won't work with N-Cloth. I mean, you can try to use those, uh, it's just nothing will happen. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the grid flow. Uh, when creating mesh for the cloth, take into consideration the grid flow uh, of the geometry. Try to have the grid flow as even as uniform as possible to create even distribution for bending and stretching. Um, in this example, you'll notice I have two planes over a box. The left hand as reads in the purple is uneven grid flow and on the right hand side in the red is even grid flow. When I play the simulation the cloth is going to fall on the box and start to wrap around it. I'll pause right there. You'll notice that uh, the even grid flow has a better distribution of the uh, embeds and flexes though very static like and uh, but it's still semi cloth versus the other side is very rugged and not very cloth-like at all, very unnatural. Next I want to talk about quads and tries. Um, end cloth was created with quads geometry in mind. Uh, that really means that the tries and end guns may yield uh, unexpected results. Uh, this is apparent when the bending and stretching of the geometry. Uh, the reason being is the links and the cross links are for quads and they were made for quads. Uh, tries interrupt the cross links uh, so there's no real stability and um, have the triangle face may stretch very ununiformly. Uh, in addition, uh, during a simulation, tampering with the topology, uh, the mesh isn't a really good idea as it may
break some of the collisions. Uh, in this example, uh, it's just a basic gravity example over a couple of things. Uh, gravity example, reds and tries, blues and quads, and the greens are the collision objects. And when I play the simulation, uh, you'll see everything is kind of falling. And there's some very minor differences that I'll show you really shortly. Let it fall just a little bit more. So I want to go to the box start first. If you look closely, you'll notice that the uh, stretching is rather ununiform. And in addition, these two attributes are the same in terms of the stretch. And you can see how it's stretching differently than the quads. So uh, that's that example. In this example, it's the same thing hanging from the points up here. And you can see it's just stretching very non-uniformly because the cross-link section is entirely broken. So that's it for the long, boring history lesson. Uh, that concludes section two. Section three, I want to start actually going over end cloth itself. I'm going to talk about the basics, that is uh, the location of the end cloth, the difference between the local space and world space, and I want to show you how to create a basic simulation. And that's about it. Thanks very much for watching and have fun.